Welcome to our News for Studio. My name is Lisa Spencer and I'm a meteorologist here at News 4. So what's a meteorologist? Well, my job is to study the weather every day and specifically to put together a forecast to help you know if it's a good day to go outside, stay inside, whether you need to wear a coat or maybe you're going to want the shorts and your shades that day. If it's going to be a snow day and you're going to get out of school. We've got thunderstorms on the way or we've got sunshine so you can get your baseball or soccer game in. So I have a pretty important job, I think. Plus, we also track storms when the weather is severe so we can keep you and your family safe. Well, I have a lot of things I want to share with you today. First off, I want to let you know how you can become a meteorologist. I want to show you some of the tools that we use every day and we want to give you a tour of our studio. So let's get started by heading to one of the spots where I spend most of my time, and that's what we call the chroma key wall. And this is where I show you all types of graphics or pictures, and this is one of the temperatures. So very important part of my job is to know how hot or how cold it is. And of course, you know, a thermometer will measure that, and then we can display it here on the TV screen, 62 in Lebanon, 61 degrees there in Hendersonville. And there's a little magic to this, a little TV trick. I'm going to let you in on it, okay? I really cannot see these numbers behind me. All I see is this green screen. Here's the magic part. The cameras can see all the colors of the rainbow, of the spectrum, except for this color green. So in place of that color green, we put in my computer graphics, like the temperatures back here. And that may lend itself to another question. So if you can't see what's behind you, how do you know where to point? Well, there is another little trick too. I actually have a television screen to the right of me and to the left of me so I can see myself. I'm basically watching myself on TV and that's how I know where to point and can stick my hand in the right spot when I want to point out Lebanon for you or McMinnville. So that's some of the tools that we use. Well, you know, when it comes to helping predict the weather, I want to know where it's raining. And here is our radar. Our radar will track where the rain is located. Now, radars are actually on the ground, like I'm standing here pretending to be my radar tower, and I'm sending out a beam around and around and around looking for rain. So when the radar finds rain, like it did over here, it sends a signal back to the radar site and shows you not only where the rain is located, but which direction it is moving. Is it moving towards the radar site or away from the radar site? That is very helpful when we're tracking severe storms and potential tornadoes. Another tool that we're going to use is our satellite image. Satellite imagery shows us where clouds are located. So you can see it's very cloudy up here to the northeast on the day that we're taping this and off to the southwest. Plenty of clouds there as well. But a satellite is different than a radar because it's up above the Earth looking back down at the Earth taking a picture. So it keeps taking these pictures and we put them all together and make a movie like you see here. A couple of other tools that I need to tell you about the weather. Well, my microphone for one, that way you can hear me and also my little IFB, which is a way that our producers and directors can talk to us. Let's continue with our studio tour and let's head this direction. You're going to see what we call our array and in the middle, you might also be seeing all of our cameras that are located in the middle of the room. And that means that we can move all around the studio and those cameras can follow us. They're all they're all really run by remote control. Someone in another room is operating those cameras. But on this what we call array, we have a bunch of televisions together here that we can show images on. So we can show a big image or actually we can even show smaller images too. Now let's keep going around the room. Here's another place that we can stop. And this is a spot where the anchors will sometimes tell you a story about the news. We can put different things back behind me here. Right now it is a blue screen that you see behind me. By the way, our anchors sit in this desk in front of me most of the time. And I say sit, you know what? They actually stand most of the time, even though they have a few stools that they can use back here as well. Here's another group of monitors that we can put graphics in or pictures or live cameras that also helps us tell you about the weather and about the news. There's another spot we call this our content center. 
and we oftentimes have an anchor or reporter standing here and they have access to computers where if they need to look up some information, it's right there at their fingertips. I really like this screen. This allows us to touch on the screen and different things will come up. This particular case, these are some comments from viewers, but we can do other things in here as well. I could even put some weather image in there too is, and pop on there and get a little information. Now we are back over here to our weather center. This is where I started, but let me show you actually what is behind me. Here's where I spend most of my time because the time that you see me on TV is only about three or three and a half minutes in a newscast. Most of my time is spent here preparing for that newscast where I put together a forecast and then I have to make graphics or images to show you to help tell you the weather story of the day. And I use graphic, graphic computers like the one that you see here. I have my satellite in there right now, but I can also put numbers on the screen. I can plot out the seven day forecast for you or maybe even just an evening forecast and one thing I like to do is the dog walking forecast. I do that most every night. Here is our control system for our radar and you can see the radar behind me. And this is where we track storms during severe weather so that we can show you where the thunderstorms are and where they're going to be over the next one hour, two hours and track them through time to help keep you and your family safe. So now we're back where we started right here in the weather center once again. So let's say maybe you might like to be a meteorologist. Well, let's talk about how you can do that. Some things that you need to know to be a meteorologist. First off, you've got to get a little education so you'll know something about the weather. And I would suggest that you start studying right now, learning as much about weather as you can. When you get into high school, take those hard science classes, take the hard math classes. And then when you get to college, you will want to major in meteorology. It usually takes you about four years in college. There are different jobs that you can have in meteorology, not just here on television. You actually could work for a trucking firm. They have meteorologists to help guide their trucks around snowstorms. Also, our airlines, they depend on meteorologists to help them know when it's safe for the airplanes to fly. The National Weather Service, our government, has a lot of meteorologists that work on their staff that do all kinds of things from learning about computer models to helping out with NASA, putting things up into space like satellites, a lot of different wonderful jobs that, that are there for you if you want to be a meteorologist. Another one is working for a university, and that's where a lot of those storm chasers work that, you know, a lot of folks get excited about chasing tornadoes. Well, they're actually doing research, and many of them do work at universities. And the next question that a lot of people always want to know is, how much money do you make? What is your salary? Well, it really ranges depending on what area you live in. It's like if you live in a small town, you're going to make a little less than if you live, say, in New York City, where Al Roker lives, you make a really big salary. So it does vary between place to place. And you also might know why or how I was changing from one picture to the other. I have a clicker that helps me go through basically what is a slideshow to tell you about the weather. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit about meteorologists, some of the tools we use, and some of the ways that you might want to think about when it comes to choosing a career for yourself if you want to be a meteorologist. We are so glad you joined us here in our News 4 studio.